Captain's Log Supplemental. So, Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. Do you remember when we were watching those WRL events and some of those Grid Life events where you used to see the in-car video and it had like the the cameras seeing front and back, but it also could see all the telemetry and everything that was going on? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, most of the ones that we liked were taken by the Sentinel system. Remember James came on our podcast earlier? Right. You know, we have no excuse since he uh, lent us one for trial and demonstration purposes. We should actually probably put that in one of our cars. Maybe two. I really think we should. I think we should. I know. Because then we'd look like the uh, immature endurance racing team that we are. Oh, wait, I mispronounced that, didn't I? Sorry about that. <laughs> we could so what does the Sentinel system do? We could have three cameras with picture in picture. We could have, if we ever get the AIM system to work, open invitation to anybody for man to come on and give us a little bit of love. We need some help. Um, and then we could have all our telemetry on there. And then we can have it streamed live into the paddock or around the world to our millions of fans. We're apparently very popular in Kenya right now. Don't know why, but that's fine. (laughs) And it can integrate all the uh, available race statistics from like Race Hero and everything. So we could actually see how we're doing on video. We wouldn't even have to carry around our phone anymore. Live. I love it. From the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. They're soon to be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher, our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Ben Dawson, I have a question that is particularly pertinent to our particular present perspective, but will come out. <laughs> oh, wow. oh man, that, that was a mouthful. What but is that it will come is out. That alliteration? Is that yeah, alliteration? I believe so. I believe so. Peter Parker. Okay. Yeah. Peter I Parker. wanted to say onomatopoeia, but I know that's not the same thing, but no, that's awesome. No, great, no. great devices. No, great devices I, that lead into this. I onomatopoeia before we started. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. I love it. There you go. Oh. We have a race coming up with a uh, a friend of ours who we met through the podcast cool. who is primarily a sprint racer. Excellent. We are going to be doing an endurance race with mm-hmm. 140 cars on the track. Right. And for you have to be lemons, you got to be lemons then, right? It is, so that it is lemons. Awesome. So, so just in time for the race to have completed, this episode of Dominating with Austin will be the differences of approaches between a sprint race and an endurance race they are are not insignificant, but they're they're definitely not equal. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. There are different things that you prize and value, or different things that different goals that you have, right? And you know? mm-hmm. and that's a sprint race. You got seventeen minutes to you know, get from the back to the front or hold your spot at the front or get you closer to the front. You know what I mean? But you got 17 minutes on track to do it. And, and luckily, uh, some of that time is going to be relieved from you. So you're not going to have to be balls to the wall all that time because at least probably 40% of that's going to end up being yellow because sprint racers also be. take a lot of risks and like knock each other off the track because mm-hmm. you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. So anyway, yes, there are different things happening in a sprint race than endurance racing because also 
where you prize rushing to the front in a sprint race, you prize crawling your way to the front and passing the, the first place car on the last lap in endurance racing, doing that. And while you're doing that, you've saved as much fuel as, as you can. You've saved as much wear and tear on your components as you can. And you have beaten the other guy at the very last second with the least amount of effort and wear and tear. So yeah. two, different, two different things going on. I mean, that's my ideal for a sprint race is I want to blast my way to the front by the short amount of time I've got versus an endurance race where I want to sort of endure and take care of stuff and end up at the very end, the best one. So I, I think it was Elaine Prost who said, uh, I want to win the race with the slowest time. Possible. Yes, yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Sounds the, crazy, but yes, I, I want to eke it out every time. All right. So the, the, his, his perspective was, if I can win with a two-minute lap, but a two-minute and one lap would have lost, I will take the two-minute lap as opposed to trying to set the record for a 140. Right. The difference to me is really twofold. You've got the approach in the driving, and you've got the fact that you have a team now of other drivers yes. who are reliant upon you, A, not wrecking the car, and B, leaving some performance within the capabilities of said car and not sucking it dry in your stint and hmm. screwing up the rest of the weekend for everybody else. It's true. I... To me, that's to me my my driving style. Hopefully, everything I'm doing on track supports the fact that I have teammates. That's not always rattling around the back of my mind because in my mind, my ethos is to go out there, drive carefully. If I got a pace that somebody tells me to match, do the pace they want me to do. But I'm always out there assuming that I'm not going to break anything. <laughs> you know that I'm I'm not doing anything that's going to be too far out of bounds or, or put the car out of play. But yeah, I mean, I guess I, I guess you, you always do need to be cognizant of that and remind mm -hmm. yourself of that. Um, but I always, I'm hoping that my approach just takes care of that naturally. I'm not trying to wreck a damn thing. And I'm not trying to break anything. I want to be fast, but I'm not, I certainly would rather back off than break anything. Well, you anytime. don't want to, you don't want to have the mechanical issue. Like, you know, I'm not going to rush a shift because honestly in 16 hours, if I have a shift that took me 0.4 seconds longer, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the difference between winning and losing. But you also have uh, to balance the risk of passing now versus passing later. And that's an approach that I think is different between the two. When you're sprint racing, you're willing to take the chance because you only have like one or two or several chances. Right. Right. Whereas in endurance racing, I have hours to pass you. Hours, literally hours. I can be out there for yep. two, three, sometimes some cars, four hours. And if I can't pass you in the first two hours, I will pass you in two hours and five minutes. And that's still fine. Miss Vicky, you're very yes. quiet. What do you got? No, I think I think you're absolutely right. Um, when it, when it comes uh, right, where did they this... actually said that? I'm I going. Have... I'm going to get, hey, get I really a newspaper to, out I have here. to double check that. No, but but it's true. I mean, <laughs> you can certainly a sprint car can certainly take way more abuse than say an endurance car or a, a track day car. Um, just what do you think? You take more abuse. Well, it, I mean, in, in a sense that you you can run it a lot harder oh, and you yeah, can yeah, be right. a lot more riskier, yeah. I got, you know, I got you. because you don't have to save that car for can, two right. hours. Use, you don't have you to use, save it for your your other people. You can use all the ripums, all the ripums. Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can you, use you, them you all. Really, you, you really only need the car for about an hour that weekend, <laughs> right? <laughs> Versus need it for right. sixteen hours. That's what you mean. I'm sorry. That the reason I asked was I, I wasn't getting it, but now that now that you say that, I'm more clear. Yeah, I got it. So, yeah, you can just yeah. run that thing ragged and then hope about hope for hope about prepping it next time after you put it on the trailer, right? Yeah, you yeah you kind of go back oh, in that evening, oh, or gosh. you know you have a couple hours to go double check it. You know, check your fuels, check check your uh, you know. Oh man, I'm so far from is. that mindset. I used to, but yeah, I used to, when I was racing carts, it was like that. It's 20 laps at a time. We're just bah, 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 full contact all the time, which I don't want to be stereotypical about well, uh, it, road racing, sprint ra racing, but there is also some more contact, I think. Is just but yeah, but you know, if you also think about it too, and this is one thing that Bill had brought up in a podcast before, you know, about this coast to coast, you know, going back and forth. What popped in my mind was, yes, it's great to go to another area and race somebody else's car. Yeah, but at is. the same time, you are not going to be as risky with that person and that car. You shouldn't be. say, for instance, than if it was your own car, because <laughs> you don't mind, you know, you know, Ben throwing your car into somebody else's car. But you wouldn't do that to somebody else. You know, if you were driving yeah, a, a friend's car. <laughs> who do you think you are, Ben Dawson or something? 
<laughs> you know, you just wouldn't. And and that's some of the lessons that we had learned when we had gone, you know, early on out to the West Coast when, you know, we were really trying to drive these cars and we were driving them. Granted, some of them weren't set up as the way they should have been. And we did some damage to those cars and you felt really bad. And guess they were, you know, rented cars. They weren't like a team car that we were sharing. But, you know, you feel really bad because you can only really drive that car like, you know, eight tenths, nine tenths. You know, you really, you're really not going to push it to the end. And we still sucked at eight or nine tenths. So <laughs> we really did. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's a learning process. Yeah. So, so it's, it's uh, for, an endurance, for an endurance race. You're everybody talks about tenths, right? For an endurance race, you well, need to. I'm not talking about that all the time. Well, they seem to, right? Oh, I drove that one in. They do, yeah. or, people uh, do say, oh, people I do. I, that's that's not my thing, but yeah, you hear it all the time, right? Yeah, that's a that's a 10 tenths full commit there, <laughs> anyway. Um, you if I'm in somebody else's car, I automatically leave a margin from what I absolutely can do, just like if. Like this weekend, we went to an HPDE. I had a right seat instructor who was there. And it doesn't matter who's in the car. It could be an instructor, could be a student, could be a, a, a joyride. I automatically, I leave another big margin because I'm not going to mess up the car with somebody in the car. And, and it's called race empathy. Well, it's car empathy, but yeah. Car empathy. Mechanical, oh, car you empathy. can say mechanical sympathy even. Yes. That, that's true. Absolutely. So I've got this mechanical simpleton, and I've got somebody in the, in the right. <laughs> oh wait, that wasn't what you said. Sorry, that pronunciation is is difficult. That that's the point of my life. It's hard. Yeah, I I automatically leave a little bit if it's not my car because if you wreck a car, you own a broken car, and I don't want to own a broken car. I have enough of those. I do that myself. I don't need that. But if I have somebody else in the passenger seat, just as well, I will always take a little bit down just to be safer. In a sprint race, you don't have that as a, a luxury. You really have to push any margins that you have. You really have to take advantage of the opportunities because in a 15, 20, 30, even 40-minute race, you may only get three good opportunities to pass the person, and you hmm. may need to take a little bit more risk. In an endurance race, I don't think you need to take that same quantity of risk. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I got a little bit of shit from uh, one of my teammates, not even a teammate, just one of the guys that was driving with us. But uh, like after looking at my video from this last AER race, um, where there was a start, it was a start of Saturday and I was starting. The start was BS. Like it got yellow flag right away. Somebody did something dumb. So we didn't the really start until we rolled around a few yellow laps. And we started like smack in the middle of the climate. That's when that was when the, when, the, when, the, when the race restarted. And uh I had to pass a couple of cars that were out of class, like faster class cars. And then I got to the car that was going to be my pass for the, the, the class lead in, in Oak Tree. And they were clearly like slowing down. We were class three, but they were slowing down for a class four or five car. So a car that should have been faster. But I saw them. I saw them going up into Oak Tree. And I was like, oh, they're going to slow roll this. They're going to wait behind this other car, which obviously doesn't know the track or is it not going as fast as you can through there. I could tell they were going slow. And so they popped out to the you know way out left to, to make the big tight turn the tight second turn of oak tree and i saw they were just going slow as shit so i just jammed my car like from the beginning of the oak tree complex i saw this happening from far back and i mean looking at the video back again now it does seem like i come from way the hell back and stuff the car in but they're way over there i just put my car where there was no car but i understand how it might look like i was just kind of jamming the pass in but even looking from the other car's perspective and mine there's never it was never that title on space, and there was never a question of whether or not I was going to get it. And also, I had talked to the, I sort of knew I knew, I knew the other driver in the other car, and knew the guy had been racing dirt track late models for like 30 years, and had been doing road racing forever. So I knew this guy was heads up and was not going to be surprised by me sticking the car in. So all this going on, I never did any back and forth with my teammate, but I kind of got a bunch of shit for pulling a sprint race and move at the beginning of an endurance race, which I guess maybe from the outside without knowing any context, it might look like that, but also. I know exactly what I can get away with and how much grip is there at that part of the corner, which obviously those guys didn't if they were going that slow. So I, st I just went and I stuck it and I ripped it and went on. And <laughs> I went on out to a big enough league where they had to slow me down. So you, you kind of have to, you, you can't over stereotypically think one thing is only one way and one thing is only the other. If you get an opportunity, even in an endurance race, jam it in there. If you know you can get away with it, you know that the person's not going to you know, slam the door on you. you, you know, take opportunities as they come up. Like don't wait. 
but then again, yeah, everything just becomes more crucial and more urgent in a sprint race, right? Mm -hmm. I, obviously, I, my feelings, obviously, my feelings are a little hurt about getting called out. But like looking back at it, it seemed opportunistic. But also, those guys, it's a race, not a wait. So it, even though it was an endurance race and I had plenty of time, those guys were waiting too. Those guys were going too slow. Like they were slowed down too much. You just can't give up a spot. You, you just can't be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to tuck him behind these guys and go slow as shit. They're here. like, no, I'm going to go. It's time to go. Right. And I guess the it, it's something that each individual driver has a tolerance for contact. And oh, he, I was never, I was never, no, no, no. I, to me, I, oh, yeah, like to me, I, I always, like if this, if this move had started to fail, I would have bailed to the grass or I would have just slammed on the brakes and backed out. I am not hitting. Yeah, right. Just to be it, clear. <laughs> it's kind of in, in the equation. You've got it. You've got a yes, tolerance for yes. contact. Right. Yeah. And then, and then you've got a tolerance for how hard I'm going to push the car. You know, am I going right. to take my red line all the way to the red line or just right. further than the red line or leave myself 500 RPM? Cause yeah, I've which is, which is part of the account. conversation, which if it's just your car in your sprint race, then that's a conversation you have with yourself. But if it's your car, in your endurance racing, another distinction is we had a, you know, we all kind of sat down and had a meeting with the car owner, Reed, and he said, Hey, I, I don't want to, he's like, I, the car's making the best power at 63. He's like, you know, run it out to 65. If you're passing somebody, you just need to kind of keep it going. And he's like, but, you know, we don't want to pass, you know, I feel, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying the wrong number. I think we we're all shifted at 65 or whatever. He's like, Yeah, this thing's making the best power right below 65. So shift to 65. He's like, If you need to stay wound out or hold the gear just to push a pass, it's fine to, you know, go out to seven once in a while. But we were all, you know, and then when it came time to save fuel for me, I'm like, all right, I'm not sure. I'm shifting to 55. Everywhere. So I'm still doing my business, doing all my stuff, but I'm short shifting the crap out of the car. But yes, you're, you're right. So, you know, where you want to shift it, how hard you want to, you know, wind out the motor is another big part of the consideration between saving fuel and saving components in an endurance race versus like, you know, I can, I can, I got another engine being built right now. You know what I mean? I'm a doctor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pediatrician from Moultrie, Georgia. I got more money than I know what to do with. You know, or you know, they, it just depends on your situation. <laughs> like, I got another motor being built. I can the body shop down the street loves me. Bang it out, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you don't care about if you don't care about anybody's safety or you just want to go out and hit people, you can't. But yeah, that's the kind of I can see having that mindset if you're just totally far into the idea of preserving your stuff. And your only experience is going out doing track days where you didn't have to worry about how much stuff costs, and then you start racing, and your only context is sprint racing. You're like, yeah, I see the the whole spec dirty field, you know, hitting the crap out of each other. I'm just using that as an example, but you know, you could you can sort of build a whole set of context for racing and how you should behave yep. independent of HBDEs and endurance racing. You just might go out there and think that's the norm. I mean, in, in circle track racing with cars, it was. It was full contact. We hit each other all the time, and that was normal. I never took my helmet off after I got off the track until I had a good chance to look around and make sure nobody was heading my way with their fist up, you know? Yep. And, so and you got a different, <laughs> different strokes for different folks. <laughs> right. And it's, it's very different if you were the driver and when you bring it in, you know, Jeeves takes care of your car. Right. As, a, yes. as opposed to your beautiful bride miss vicky takes care of my car i'm not going to bring a car in That's broken right. to her because i don't really want to have the long drive home uh, time. you know it, what though ben there's it's there's not this... it's not the repair work it's just the volume yeah and the disappointment he's you're so disappointed when he messes the car up, right it's the <laughs> disappointment that hurts the most bill that's what we really hate it's not the labor i'll do the labor bill i'll you, put a new muffler on there after you snatch it off on the hit the curb it's better. the disappointment you could yeah. have done better if you're gonna pull a move like that, your lap time should at least be three seconds better than the one before. So I'm Pretty disappointed much. more than anything, Billiam. Yes, I know. But but <laughs> before before we go, I've got one last thing: the endurance racer, the true quality endurance racer. Mm -hmm. What they have to do is sometimes it's a fuel saving contest. We need to avoid the one fuel stop that we're trying to do and what yeah, they yeah. need so to, a lot of times that's all it is a lot of times that's all you need to do. and what they need to do is they need to listen to the pit crew who are telling them that there is a fuel oh, light oh i hear that i hear the willing, axe on, i hear the axe on the wheel now you're grinding the hell out of that axe aren't be, you? be willing to drive until the fuel light comes on and not deny the presence of said fuel light which is there <laughs> but you know all right all right all right hey well listen you, you said you're making some great points, I'm sure, to Vicky <laughs> right now. I'm sure she's getting all that. But I will say, you know, when we're talking about the difference between endurance racing and sprint racing, one of the big things that I've noticed lately, just because it was my most recent race, I get to kind of go back and watch the video a lot because, of course, I spent all this money to race. I want to go watch the video a thousand times and enjoy it. But 
uh, I was on, I was for most of that weekend, I was on a pace. I was on a set pace. And it was still so fun to me to go back and watch how my driving changed within that set pace as I, as I was kind of getting back up to speed with the track and kind of getting more and more in rhythm. Because by the end there, my pace looked crazy. And then I'd drive, by, I'd drive down the straightaway just letting off the gas for so long because I had the rest of the lap so together. So I was driving much more of a sprint racing style toward the end just to get good practice and hammer it, hammer in the car a little bit, but then having to let out so much to kind of lose the pace I needed to. So it was, uh, I was definitely kind of sprint racing it there toward the end, trying to get a good lap time with them. Be like, all right, I got to let out for like this whole front stretch to kind of get back down to my lap time. So I have been fascinated with, watch, with watching the way my, I, my own driving was different based on what goals I had or how good I was uh, feeling the track. So I can, I think we're I'm pretty excited about I try to win. I'm pretty excited about going in and looking at the data that's coming yeah. out of the the spec Miata now because I would love to see what's going to happen when I actually hit a zone with mm-hmm. it or even when we kind of get that all set up in the other car where we can start reading yeah. the data because there there is just driving and then all of a sudden you start going into that purple mist of happiness mm-hmm. and yeah. everything just feels like it's all coming together and you're hitting it just well I I just I'm looking forward to seeing how that data change happens and I want to drive the spec me out. Can the tall boy fit in the spec me out? We have we have the holes for the seat to be moved, Ben. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> no sliders in that car. Well, I think uh, I think we've got uh, I think we've completely covered the topic of the differences between sprint racing and endurance. Yeah, yeah I think so. Anything else about it? We've definitely covered every aspect of it. No, I mean I I kind of feel like our conversation was a little bit smart assy about it, but not as much as it could have been. That's so there yeah. definitely are some so shocking big, with our uh, podcast, but you know, <laughs> there's some there's some huge differences between the two, you know. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy how you can just kind of come up in different racing disciplines and have a totally different view of what's right and wrong on track or the right way to the right way to kind of get around. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely been in NASA races or SCCA races and seen you know sprint racing where it's like, well, <laughs> these guys are just hitting the crap out of each other. But also, you know, I mean, but if you think about it. One interesting thing to think about doing is maybe go back and watch the SCCA runoffs in the spec me out of class from 10 years ago versus now versus 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you that that class used to be one that was famous for some of the best driving out there, but also famous for some of the biggest contacts. They used to call it like crash pinata or spec pinata. Um, but these days the racing is still really good, but those guys that they're driving has gotten a lot better and it's heavy, heavy sprint racing without a whole lot of incident. But, and they're so good and they're so fast when there is an incident a car is upside down you know what i mean so yeah. it's, it's gotten to be pretty high stakes but in general transactionally lap after lap they're not beating the crap out of each other like they used to so if you want to watch some great pretty high level uh, sprint racing in action go watch some spec me out of national levels like uh majors races majors, go yeah. look up spec me out of majors or runoffs and you'll see some guys getting busy with no time on the clock and still being pretty clean about it. So that's a great example of some fantastic sprint race. And if you just want to kind of see how the other half lives, those guys are going out there on our comp Hoosiers and SCCA racing. Um, I'll tell you what, and also Hoosiers are famous for falling off like two or three heat cycles, at least re- most recent I heard those tires are only good for a few heat cycles. So these guys are out there laying out, Tons of money for engines that probably get refreshed once or twice a season to make their legal 125 horsepower to the ground. And they're racing on slicks that they can probably get two or three heat cycles out of. So these guys are putting down the money to go to the track for a major weekend. Probably going to run through 16 to 20 tires. Yep. So and practice all those and all those money considerations are in the back of their head as they're doing the sprint racing. I'm recommending that you go watch. Tons of these guys don't rev match when they shift gears. Like it is racing without a lot of consideration for the wear parts, but it's clean as far as trying to not have contact. And it is fast. Those guys are good. Even if you want to be like that guy, ain't even rev matching shit. They're going fast. So anyway, that's what, just I wanted to pop that out there as a good, hopefully high note for any. If you want to go watch some great, spe- some great sprint racing, check out Spec Miata. You know who's got some uh, sets of users sitting in the garage right now. You got some hoosies? Mm-hmm. Bougie hoosies? Mm-hmm. She's never used them yet. I do. Wait, how old are they? Uh, Brand spanking new. Slap them on the car. Let's get busy. <laughs> what, are we ra- what are we racing? Is it AER or Lucky Dog? With the- Lucky Dog. I- we're 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 not doing a ton of anything right now because our truck Let's is- sneak those hoosiers onto the, the Lucky Dog. And let's I don't think Kathy would be very happy. 
Kathy would God, not can you be you imagine? Kidding. You wrote there was some purple ass hooch. I was like, oh no, we're going, we're going the track with this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody did that at CMP with Lucky Dog. No, somebody did that at CMP with Lemons when we were there. They tried to run some Toyo RA ones, I think, back in the day, <laughs> and then like they made them, they made them physically carry the four wheels around and apologize to everybody, mm-hmm. and they made them physically walk the tires <laughs> out the gate at CMP, out by the assholes uh, mm-hmm. gas station. Yep, the waterman. And they, they had to set the tires out there and then they could come back and get in their car and race on some legal tires. Like I think that was so funny. <laughs> did, did you see That's the, uh, did awesome. you see the, the, what was it? I don't know if it's new. It was the first, I think it was the first time I saw it. They had the team take the tires off and go sit in the stand. So their tires could watch other, other tires <laughs> and not learn how not to go off the track. So they had to, they were they had their tires spectating the race to see that other tires behaved better than they did. Uh, see, these other tires don't go off at turn one. That's right. These other tires don't roll in anybody else's vehicle. Look at these That's other right. tires. These other tires can slow down and not hit somebody else. That's mm-hmm. so funny. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. And they like, had to watch the race for a while to see what the other tires were doing that they weren't. Like if you can't, if you take yourself so seriously that you can't go enjoy yourself with lemons and all the accompanying awesomeness. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say anything bad about you, but I also want to say maybe you don't love yourself or anything. You might not be doing it quite right. <laughs> That's right. You made an adjustment to your approach and your attitude. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you, Ben. Hey, thanks for having Bye. me. Bye.